Okay, so thank you everyone for watching this video. Um, this is going to be part of my inspirational midlife women's series. And I'm interviewing a whole lot of women who inspire me to keep pushing myself and stepping out of my comfort zone and trying to live my best life as a midlife woman and beyond. So today I've interviewing Alison Bell from Sydney. She's 53 and I just love Alison's story. It just brings me so much joy and um, yeah, I hope you enjoy this as well. So thanks for joining me, Alison. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I, I don't know the whole story. I've kind of kept this a little bit um, not not planned because yeah because I know it's going to make me feel great and I think it'll come across but you started you learned to swim as a midlife woman is that right yes uh 50 started 50. swimming when I turned 50 and learning so, how to swim so what prompted uh so I've just always wanted to learn how to swim yeah. I grew up in Canada um and even though we had lakes nearby so I sort of knew how to doggy paddle and you know do the the little heads above water breaststroke thing um I never learned how to actually properly swim the freestyle and and so as such I just was never really confident in the water and I live a five minute walk from the ocean <laughs> and it was something that just always nagged in the back of my mind and so even though I took the kids to swimming lessons and I insisted that they learn how to swim and be confident they went to nippers um I just never did it and so I would never be in the water with them and that was another thing I was very self-conscious of how I looked in the swimming suit um so when the kids got older and finished up high school I thought well now's the time for me to learn how to do this so, yeah, I found an adult swim school in Sydney and run by a woman, I should say, a fantastic lady, and um, just started learning how to swim. It was great. Wow. That's amazing. Um, so before that, so, yeah, so basically starting from scratch. Yes, yes, it's completely amazing. from scratch. Yeah, I really did not know anything about, you know, how you meant to hold your body, how you put your hands in the like bilateral breathing, which I don't even really do anymore because that's a whole other story. But it was, you know, I, I couldn't really swim long distance. But I, you know, when you're bilateral breathing, you're turning constantly. And then a swim coach said to me, well, just breathe every second stroke. Yeah. And it made a world of difference. And so, yeah, you know, it's, yes. it's great. <laughs> Swimming, learning to swim as an adult is super hard like it's yes. it's actually it's a very technical sport and it's also a lot of feel for the water so if you haven't grown up with that it's really really hard like I've seen people struggle like I, I grew up learning that was one of the things I am so grateful for my mum she used to drive us to another town uh, once a week for swimming lessons and yeah it, because she didn't know how to swim. So she really, that was something really important to her. So we were shipped off to another town. My, my little brother, where they were living when he was young, she had to do a three hour round trip for his swimming lessons, but she did. <laughs> and um, it's something that I'm really grateful for, for my mum doing, because being able to swim in as an adult, there's not that many people that actually can do it. And then learning as an adult, it's super hard. So you should be so... Pattern. Yeah, because they don't get in the water with you. <laughs> <laughs> you're just, they're giving you these instructions and they're doing it from, you know, above the pool there and you're looking at them going and you're trying to process that in your brain. You're going, oh. and yeah, it took a long time to get that, just the stroke skill going. Yeah, is it you frustrating know. at the start? Oh, yeah, because it, it, it did take me a while and you'd sort of see these other people kind of advancing. You're going, well, what are you doing that I'm not doing? But once you kind of, once I got it, I mean, there's still, you know, you still, I'm still doing drills and still like, it's just a constant because I'm not in a squad. It's called um, swim fit, which is kind of, I guess, 
beneath it's like the squad, squad. but it's, it's like a squad but there's still a lot you know and you're constantly being told don't do this and don't do that and I mean it's great I really enjoy it but you know there are times you're like surely by now I would know that I don't, the pros <laughs> still do all their drills but they, yeah. that's, that's life I don't think you ever stop learning <laughs> that's true you don't ever stop learning and I just think no it's fine and, and one of the other things I've really kind of figured out through this process is I am not a sprinter <laughs> like I cannot go very fast I will go I'm quite content to go slowly and be in the middle of the pack. You know, there's people that, you know, they want to pass you, but slightly younger people, the men, I'm just like, you, yeah, you go, you go right ahead. I'm happy to just focus on doing what it is I need to do. And it's, it's, um, yeah, it takes me a while to get warmed up in the pool, I think. And then yeah, sort, of, right. sort of get that's, going. You're yeah. doing it, Flo. You're yeah. doing it. And that's, I think, is the moral of the story you're out there doing it something that you obviously had in the back of your mind the whole time you've put yourself last as women do and let yep. your kids learn to swim and stuff and you never did it and now it's your time and you're doing it and yeah was there a lot of, a lot of fears and doubts and things as, throughout the process or oh yeah yeah as I said I hated I hated the whole process of trying to find a swimsuit that fit me because you know plus size so that's that's an endeavor of itself sometimes it's it's easier but there are just times you're like oh, I wish I could wear that swimsuit <laughs> but you get over it and then you just go no one's actually looking at me no I think when we spoke one other time you were like you're having some like self-doubts in the chest yes. and stuff because yeah. it it's kind of a um I, remember oh, it's... When I was younger I used to just strip off in the middle of the change room now I'm like oh my god I cover myself up a bit. But yeah yeah you just yeah. don't care though do you because everyone's there it's it's a very um it's a very inclusive environment and people are all there for the one reason and so it kind yeah. of takes, that it takes away from that do you agree Oh, I totally agree. I think, and not, not only that, like nobody's watching you when you're in the water. Yeah. They're just, they're too busy focusing on their own thing. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, once you, once you realize that you're like, what was I thinking? <laughs> yeah. What, what was I holding myself back for because of my thoughts when no one else cares? <laughs> that's just it no one else cares they're they're focused on themselves they're thinking about what they need to do maybe they're thinking oh I hope nobody's looking at me but you know I'm not looking at anyone else so it's yeah, yeah that was that's an interesting process to get over and then you just then you just get on with it yeah so how many years did it take till you felt like you were confident to I don't know assume a distance I suppose um I would say actually it wasn't until really because I should also say obviously with COVID and yeah. lockdowns I began and then you had to sort of stop and it was sort of on off because Sydney went through a few few lockdowns um, so it wasn't really probably until maybe November of last year that I really sort of started getting the distances in consistently yeah and it started really clicking and yeah. it all started coming together so it took me a while <laughs> it's not it's not that long really because you started when you're 50 so you're 53 now so it's like a few years with COVID in between yeah actually not long to be able to actually do something completely new so yeah that's and amazing. I think there was a bit because I was going weekly for the lessons and then um I just thought, you know, I just have to take myself off to the local ocean pools that we have here. And I just started making a consistent effort to get down to those pools. And just even if I was only practicing for half an hour, um, it just started to increase my confidence as well. Great. So how many times a week? What last year were you swimming? So it'd be about twice a week. So it was, a, it was always an hour for the lesson and then probably about half an hour, that just sort of depended, but um, at least half an hour in the ocean water pools, yeah. Excellent. That's amazing. And so I think when we spoke last year sometime, you had this like kind of 
kind of idea that you would like to do an open water swim that was kind yes. of your long-term goal and can you like explain why that I, can't, I think I know why but you can tell me why I wanted to do it because it's that was that was it you know I wanted to be comfortable in the ocean yeah. and to swim you know not you know not one of those super duper ocean swimmers but who knows maybe um so yeah I just wanted to be able to go I've I've done that right right and was your son doing it as well or not? oh he said to me oh we should do that together and I was like oh what a great idea and of course subsequently <laughs> <laughs> he's completely forgotten about it because he's gotten on with his 20 year old life he wasn't <laughs> I don't even I think I told him and I think he promptly forgot that I was going to actually do it because there is an ocean swim just down from us um, that happens twice a year but that gets really really rough because of the way they there's a little island just offshore and so the the dump and the waves can be really really bad so I didn't actually do that ocean swim that's okay that's understandable <laughs> yeah I just went sometimes I look at the I won't go in the ocean if it's too rough because it's it's quite yeah, it's still cool. even now overwhelming but yeah. um so the ocean okay. swim that I did yeah was somewhere else that's, that's amazing because I kind of thought it was your maybe your son that but you have done this all off your own bat so you yeah we did it as a group there's a few of us from the lady that runs that swim school she just yeah. kind of put it out there does anyone want to do do this swim and I just thought well you know it's now or never really right. yeah that's amazing how far was it it was a kilometer that's amazing oh my goodness uh yeah like terrifying <laughs> going yep I'm doing it was it how did you feel actually putting your hand up and going okay I'm committing to this I'm going to do it that felt good. <laughs> the day of it was like, why am I doing this? <laughs> so had you, other than being in the sea pools, had you actually been out in the ocean? Did, was part of your practice yes, in the ocean? Yes, I had. There's, I do occasionally go to some ocean swimming kind of classes that are run down at Bondi Beach. But because of the winter summer that we've had where we've had a lot of rain they don't run consistently so you know there's just days where they've just cancelled it and gone it's just too rough and I mean that's understandable I'm not going to go into this so that was I had had some but not a lot I guess yeah. you could say yeah okay okay so what did it feel like getting there on the day of the event oh yeah I was just well, you know what? It was it was an awful day. It was really raining quite heavily, and <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, maybe they'll cancel it." <laughs> and I kept looking at my phone, going, "Surely by now they would have canceled it," because I knew they were going to cancel the one just down the road. Because when it gets really, really rainy, it gets really bad. But you know, I just thought, okay, I kept getting ready, kept heading. <laughs> And I got drenched because I took public transport there and I was completely soaked by the time I actually got to the beach because it was just such a heavy downpour. And I went, well, I'm here now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already wet. <laughs> I'm already wet. I may as well go through with it now. But it was it was interesting because, you know, in my age group, the 50 to 59, there's quite a few women. Yeah. So it was, um, yeah, it was good. But you did, know, that, did it, that feel good that you're going, wow, like... I go to events and I go, oh my God, it's all, I feel like I'm the other one. There's all these people doing this, this kind of stuff. Like it, it's motivating. Yeah. To, to, and it's it was fun. great. And they're all different sizes. So it yeah. was, it was really, it was interesting, but it was still intimidating. You know, you're looking at the water and they had like, um, you know, a police boat off in the thing, you know, to make sure nothing untoward was out there in the water. Cause it is the ocean. <laughs> Which beach was it? Uh, Belmoral Beach. Okay. Yeah. So that was yeah, kind there's, of... there's sharks out there. Like yeah. <laughs> you're like, well, they can oh, be. Oh, great. <laughs> I hadn't even thought about the sharks. <laughs> but um, yeah, the morning of I just thought, oh, okay, you know, you just gotta do it. You just gotta get in and did it feel good that you had got thought? Did you think on the day, okay, three years ago, I couldn't even swim. And now I'm here 
at the start line of an open water. I wasn't thinking that. <laughs> I really wasn't. I was just like, okay. <laughs> that was really just get through it. You know what to do. And just, yeah. it was sort of afterwards that I was kind of thinking that. But yeah. um and so what did it feel like? Did you, is it a beach entry or how do you enter the water? Yeah, yeah, it's a beach. Um, and that in itself, I'd never experienced that because you probably would have, but everyone's kind of... It's terrifying. It's terrifying because they're all swimming and the waves are kind of pushing you into one another. And you're, you're like, oh, I didn't mean to hit that person. Oh, I've kicked someone behind me. Oh, <laughs> that's that took a bit of time probably by the time you get out to the the boy you know that yeah. you have to spin around it, yeah that it took me all that time just to get used to that's, that's being good. in and amongst of that because it, it can be very distressing <laughs> um, really I thought it wasn't until the end and then we'd swum and we were coming into shore and the waves were just kind of pushing you in all sorts of different directions that I thought why am I doing <laughs> and I started to panic a bit then but I thought no no you know what to do just keep your head down and put your head up every couple of but I remember there was a, a volunteer lifeguard and I could see because it was very murky dark water which I wasn't used to and so when I could see the sand and work out I can actually stand from this point I thought I'm not swimming anymore I'm walking <laughs> I was I'm I was done. done I just went no I've done it and now I'm now I'm getting my and feet now back I'm, I'm walking out yeah <laughs> but when I got out and the lady that runs the swim school she was there I just said to her I'm never doing this again and then I was like the next day I was like no I think I will do that again. yeah 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 that's always the way that's always yeah. the way um so what about in the event was that like like you're out like was it out and back or around um it was out a bit and then parallel to the beach and yes. then in yeah right. so it because it was it was the one kilometer so that we weren't doing a whole bunch of different loop-de-loops and um and so how did that feel in the middle of all you just in the moment just going I've got to get through this one, one stroke at a time pretty much yeah it was you know just keep your head down and do the breathing and and I could see Every once in a while, I would put my head up and go, okay, yeah, there's the lifeguard. <laughs> my head oh, okay. back down again. It <laughs> keeps swimming. And um, yeah, so it was fine when the parallel to the beach was excellent. That was fine. <laughs> you know, was it was the in and out that I was like, oh, okay. But, you know, I mean, that's a, that's an experience thing. Yeah, it's a thing. You know. <laughs> yeah and and actually a few weeks ago I did a I did another ocean swim kind of class and that was so rough it was really rough and it just started getting really bad and but you know I knew what to do to dive under the ocean to dive under the waves and I just kept doing it and then I just sort of said to the instructor I think I'm going to take a break from this now because I was exhausted and I thought I know not to go out there when I'm panicked and I was starting to feel panicked at that point. So I thought there's just no point in me continuing. Yeah. I, I know that I've accomplished something here. I know I can do it in my head. Yeah. It's just it, practice. It's just one step at a time. Yeah. Um, and so coming out of the water, like how did it feel? Like we just like, oh my goodness, I've done this. It was a part of that. It was like, okay, I finished. And, relief, relief, and thank relief. God I've done this. <laughs> it was... <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't the elation that I thought I would feel, to be honest. I thought I would be like, woohoo, look at me. But it was like, oh, my God, that was so hard. <laughs> I'm glad I've done it, but that was never really gonna hard. Do, never going to do it again, as you said. The yeah. Start. And then, uh, but what about the next day? So obviously you must have had some elation. You must have had elation at some stage because it's a big thing. It's a huge thing that you've done. I'm so happy for you. Yeah, I think at some point it just triggered that it was like, Oh, I did that. Yeah. I did you've the thing that I said I was going to do. I actually not, achieved that. Yeah. You've gone from not knowing how to swim to going through that whole process, which is really hard, to doing an ocean, a one kilometer ocean swim. I think just think it's amazing, Alison. Yeah. I, yeah, at the time I just thought, Ugh. and then, yeah, later on it was like, no, actually, I put my mind to something and I did do it. Yeah. yeah. I think it's amazing. You should be so proud of yourself. It's such a big thing. It's hard enough for 
people who've been swimming for years struggle to swim in the sea and it's very intimidating because you don't know what's going to happen the conditions you know like you just yeah they change quickly (laughs) it can change really really quickly and that was the thing that taught me down at Bondi just a few weekends ago was how quickly it can change. And so you have to, you have to know yourself and know your abilities and go, I mean, for that day where you did the swim, because it's, I don't know if you've been to Belmore, but it's, so it is an ocean, but it's, it's the North shore and it's, um, it's a bit more protected than say Bondi or don't downgrade it. It's a big, it's a big achievement. Oh yeah. Yeah. And um, when I was, you know, they were saying afterwards said, oh yeah, that, that, that's what like, that's what it is in the inner Harbor. That's what, you know, it's murky and it's, and I'm like, oh, okay. That could have been perhaps mentioned <laughs> prior to the swim. <laughs> Cause Bondi can be very clear. You know, you can see the sand you can see what's there. And it was, so you're, I was sort of half expecting that, but you know, look, you don't, you can't predict everything. Can you? I think that's one of the really good things that I'm hearing here is that you were able to, even though you were faced with different like conditions and murky water, which is, it's really hard if you can't see where you've got, it's, it's quite intimidating when you can't see what's around you. Like I love swimming where I swim, I can see the fish and the sea. Yeah. when it's rough and stuff and you can't, it's, it, it's quite intimidating. So to do that and be able to adapt in the moment as well is a really big thing because not only are you doing something completely new, but you've also had to adapt to different conditions on the day. So that's a huge thing. It's great. Yeah, yeah. I, oh, I'm glad I did it, you know. But, yeah, at the time it was just like, oh. <laughs> but then I, at some point I thought, well, I'm in the water. I'm not going to turn around and that's just not an option. That's so great. It was, it was just keep going, just keep swimming, just what keep swimming. Kind of you, what, what made you think that? Is it because you're with there was a group of people and you thought I can't, I can't pull out, or you just just in yourself you go, no, I'm here, I'm going to do it, and I can do it, just knowing that you could, that you were capable. Yeah, just knowing that I was capable. I thought I can do this. I might not come first. I won't come first. Yeah. <laughs> first. And that's what it's all uh, about. I can do this, <laughs> and I just thought if I don't do this, I'll be so angry at myself. So yeah, that was. And then after that, I think, um, yeah, once I was parallel to the beach, like that wasn't even in the process. It was just, just yeah, do what you know what to do. Yeah. 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 That's amazing. What would you, what would you say to other women who are like contemplating, it doesn't have to be swimming, just something that they've kind of had in the back of their minds. And that's what, this is what I'm all about. People have got, like, I know there's so many of us out there that have had things in the back of their mind and they get to 50 or midlife and they go, is it too late? Can I do it? What would you say to those women? Um, I would say, because I've been thinking about this, you might have to do it on your own without a group because I knew no one else was really interested in doing this with me. Like, I hadn't met anyone that was really interested in swimming, learning how to swim as an adult. Maybe now, I don't know. But at the time, I, there wasn't anyone. So I thought, well, I'll just have to go on my own. So I think if you're waiting for people to join you, because it is, you're lonely. And so you sort of already got those feelings of loneliness. And now you're going to a class or whatever by yourself. It's, that's intimidating on its own so I I would say you might have to be prepared to just go off and do it by yourself and then eventually you know you'll meet people and you'll you know hopefully make friends I mean I have made some friends through it and we meet up occasionally but you haven't relied on that I haven't relied upon it and it wasn't like allowed yourself to go this is my thing I'm going to do it and it also wasn't really my intention when I went into it, it wasn't, oh, I'm going to make a, make my a whole bunch of new friends and stuff like that. I mean, if that happens, that happens, but it was, I need to do this for me was yep. my, was my thinking behind it. I love that. That's kind of me with my Iron Man. I, I didn't, I don't know anyone that does this kind of thing. So I just train all by myself and stuff. Yeah. And, um, it's kind of, it, it, it makes you, it gives you some strength because it, it means that you, it, it allows you to feel independent mm. and that you can do and that you aren't reliant on other people because yeah women we feel like we can't do some things but we can we're so capable we're so much more capable than what we can ever imagine and we don't need 
people to help us. We can't, we can do it ourselves. That's absolutely true. And I think, you know, you, you do sit back and you go, actually, I did do this and I did do that. And I did this and I did it all on my own. So I think we are, yeah, we're far more capable than we realize. And while it's great to be with a group, you know, it's, I'm, I'm quite ha- happy and comfortable being on my own and doing things by myself. Yeah. Um, it doesn't bother me. So yeah. that was something that was, that wasn't really a hurdle for me to get over. Yeah. But I think for some people, they yeah. like to go in a group. And, yeah. and then if their group isn't doing doesn't have the same dream as them don't let it stop you like exactly you know if you've really enjoyed doing that salsa class or whatever it is yeah you know keep going yeah Um, I love that thank you yeah that's that's really good advice because yeah I think that it's hard and it is a bit hard doing some things by yourself but it's it's very freeing and it's very empowering as well I think I think all of the things that I've done alone like my solo travel and other bits and pieces and that the Ironman it's given me it's empowered me it's empowered me to think I'm mm. capable of doing lots of things yeah and it's the other thing about it is you don't have to think about anyone else and that's something that we women are just conditioned to do as we were talking about earlier we just constantly thinking oh this that this person did and and then you just off doing something for yourself and you're like yeah that's that's to them I'm just yeah I'm gonna go uh, off uh, I love that because yes, because we we are we our whole lives is spent doing things for other people. Or someone might go, "Do you want to do this?" And I go, "Yeah." I, I was a bit of a yes person, even yeah. though I do them. And when you go and do yeah. something just for yourself, um, by yourself, it's yeah, it's an amazing feeling. It's good. Yeah, that's the other thing is you know it's 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 recorded in my you know little planner. Swim, swim when I'm swimming I think that's something you taught me to do or told me to do and it's like so that's I don't change for that yeah it's like no I've blocked this time out for myself and so if something comes up or you want you you were I mean my kids are older now but you know they still sometimes would be like oh can you do this it's like actually no I'm off and you know they're used to that now so it's it's fine I the only one that doesn't get used to it, of course, is my partner. It's like, no, I'm off for a swim now. And he's like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> you deal with it. Yeah. As, yeah. As, do you think that's, um, that's just something that I don't know, I feel like I've become much more, what's the word called? I haven't lost, I, I, talk, I talk about this quite a lot. I haven't exactly lost my nurturing um, ability when I lost my reproductive hormones, but I'm definitely more able to think about myself and what I want and what I need and to be able to try. It's it's still a challenge as we've discussed before, because of our conditioning, a lot of the time we, we think women feel like, or they've been brought up to serve others, but serving ourselves is super important. Mm. And I feel like as my reproductive hormones diminished, I don't know, maybe it's at my age of my kids as well, that they're more independent, um, but I've been able to think about myself more and put myself first a bit more. And I think it's so important. Yeah. Oh, I think so. And I think it comes as a shock sometimes to people who yeah. aren't used to it. And you just think, no, sorry. Yeah. Start like, like, saying no a bit more to other people. And they're, it throws people, you know, yeah. it's, that, it's that boundary you create for yourself and go, no. Yeah. yeah. Like we were saying, it's, it's, it's up to us to change this kind of generational thing that's been passed down that we're here just to serve others. And it's, we, it, we have the power to change how midlife women and women in general are like perceived and how we perceive ourselves. And I think it's really, it's exciting. I think so. Yeah. It, it, it's, you know, I, I hope for my daughter and of that generation, they see women my age and just doing whatever we want to do. And they go, yeah, you know, cause I mean, I remember the Golden Girls. Do you remember the Golden Girls? Yes, love, I mean, I love. I they love were that like show. our age, and they looked oh, like they were... I love that show. And yeah, it wasn't until many years later that it was like, what? How old were they? And you think, oh, that's just not on, you know. So 
you know, as much as I loved that show, I thought they were hilarious. But you I know, thought they were about eighty, though. I think they were about. 50. I thought they were. I thought they were well and truly all in their seventies, and to learn that they weren't, it was uh, like what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're creating a new, a new yeah. um, era of Golden Girls, a different girl era. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, well, thank you. I love your, I love your story, Alison. It's just so inspiring because. As I was saying to you before I started recording, there's times when I will just get in a bit of a slump and I'll go, am I too old for this? Or, you know, is it too late? And then I look at someone like you doing something like this and then it inspires me again. And that's why I want to do these talks because we aren't too old. It's not too late and you can achieve things that you might have been thinking about for decades and decades. Like we're, we're just, we have this opportunity now if we look after our health to start doing all of those things. And I think that's that's what I'm all about. That's why I really want women to prioritise their health and wellness because if we do, then we it, it, it doesn't stop us. We can keep doing things and keep challenging ourselves. It doesn't have to be physical. It just whatever. We can start doing all the things that we've maybe put on the back burner. And That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's exciting. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. So... Um, one thing I'm going to be asking everyone is what do you think is the best thing um, about being a midlife woman? Well, the first thing I thought of was, well, there's no more periods, which, you know, I have to say. <laughs> Bonus. it's just fantastic. Um, but also, I think, you know, with training ourselves is we just don't really care too much about what other people think of us. And, but that, you know, that takes effort. It I does. think for our generation, we, we have to, it is a mindset, mindset shift. And once we start getting into it and really working that muscle, um, I think it's the best thing. We just, we just go, well, whatever. I just don't care. <laughs> and you just keep going. It's yeah. very freeing, isn't it? It's very freeing. There's a real confidence that comes with it. And it's, it's you know, it's depressing when you hear, you know, ageist and aging, you know, reports in the news. And you think, what a shame, because we women are, we're fantastic. Yeah, we've we got know so much. So much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we've got so much to offer. And we just need to recognize that, I think, as well. <clears throat> and not, pl not, not play into those messages. We need that's to, right. that, that's not correct. We, we don't need to play into those. We don't need to believe those. We need to just start that's right. feeding ourselves. And like you said, it does take effort. It takes effort to um, not care about what people think. But it's so important because we hopefully have got another, I don't know, 30, 40, I don't know, maybe even 50 years to go. Like we've got a lot of living to do and I'm refused, right. to, be, refused to, you know, because of my own self-limiting beliefs about, about worrying about other people people think mm -hmm. refuse to let that stop me from living this next part of my life to the fullest yeah it sounds like you're the same <laughs> yeah oh I agree I just think now I've 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 done I've done what society expected me to do and now I'm going to go and do my my own thing yeah definitely I love it thank you that's a great way to win thank you so much for this oh. I really appreciate it and I Thanks, know you're going to inspire other women to um maybe step out of their comfort zone and start living their dreams as well oh, i hope so yeah. thank Thanks, you Tanya. <laughs>